This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mark Tapson, editor of the Horowitz Freedom Center's TruthRevolt.org. My friend Jamie Glazov has honored me with a Tapson moment for the Glazov Game Show. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that's a little different from the sort of thing that's usually covered at uh, Truth Revolt or FrontPageMag.com or on the Glazov Gang, and that is the radical left's war on masculinity. The war on masculinity or war on men, as it's sometimes called, sounds a bit melodramatic. But hey, if the left can claim that the right's waging a war on women, which we aren't, then we can certainly say that the left is waging one on masculinity, which they are. It's a, a big topic that gets even bigger the further down the rabbit hole you go on it. And so I'm just going to deal with some broad strokes of it today. Um, the issue of masculinity is a, it's a critical battleground in the ideological war against Western values because to win that war, it's necessary for the left to undermine the character and to sap the will and the righteous aggression of the men who are largely the ones who will physically defend those values. And the left seeks to do that by deconstructing the very notion of masculinity. The, <clears throat> uh, the impetus behind all this is cultural Marxism, which, as many of you know, is a strategy for the gradual subversion of the intellectual, moral, um, spiritual, and family traditions of Western civilization in order to reconstruct society as a Marxist paradise. Uh, like Venezuela, <clears throat> radical feminism is an important element in that strategy. The, the first waves of feminism were all about securing the right to vote and equality before the law and things like that, and certainly those are fair and uh, desirable aims. But third wave feminism, as it's called, which emerged in the 90s, is not about equality. It's about bringing down the supposed white capitalist patriarchy. And to do that, it's necessary to break down the strongest and most elemental of relationships, the family unit. And you accomplish that by upending the traditional sex roles that have held for countless thousands of years of human existence, um, which feminists believe keep a woman bound in servitude in the role of uh, mother and wife. And to do that, it's necessary to destroy the male-female gender binary, which they consider to be an artificial social construct that's designed to maintain power for the oppressor, namely men, uh, primarily white men, but generally men. Once you culturally establish the idea that gender is arbitrary and not, not publicly based, you can begin deconstructing masculinity. Uh, you can see that happening in the indoctrination of students in college now, where young men are taught in programs that are sponsored and created by women's studies departments, that their masculinity is toxic. That's the buzz phrase now, toxic masculinity, and that it needs to be uh, broken down and questioned and feminized. Young men are told that they are part of a rape culture of male privilege uh, and that their masculine nature is the source of every societal problem from domestic violence to ecological devastation to war. But it's not just in college. This indoctrination now begins as early as pre-kindergarten. Boys are taught from early on now that their masculine energy is problematic at best and toxic at worst. Uh, one aspect of this indoctrination and this emasculation of the Western male is the demonizing of male aggression in everything from football to guns. Um, teaching our children, and especially boys, that violence is wrong under any circumstances leads to ludicrous zero-tolerance extremes like suspending boys from school for pointing at their index fingers like gun barrels. Uh, now, the radical left is fine with violence when it suits them. They excuse Palestinian violence because it's resistance against the so-called occupation. Uh, they excuse Occupy Wall Street violence because capitalism is supposedly oppressive. They excuse Black Lives Matter violence because that's striking back against the supposed systemic white supremacy. But other than when it's convenient for them, the left is teaching our boys now that violence is never the answer and that we must evolve away from seeing that as a solution to our problems today. Now, obviously, violence should always be a last resort. And in an ideal world, um, diplomacy would solve every dispute. But there have always been and always will be some factions or countries uh, that aren't interested in dialogue or peaceful coexistence, and if they smell weakness, they will come for you. Uh, so there comes a time when righteous violence is the only or the best way to end conflict, whether it's confronting a schoolyard bully or 
uh, ending Nazism. And if you aren't morally, physically, and spiritually prepared to engage in that kind of righteous violence, your culture will lose. So it does no good to teach our boys that physical strength and war and violence are always wrong if evil men aren't teaching their sons the same thing, and they're not. Our boys will simply end up being beaten or enslaved or killed by those who encourage aggression and define strength the old-fashioned way and who are perfectly happy to dominate others with it. If you want peace, as the ancient saying goes, prepare for war. Uh, now, there are really two broad primary consequences of this war on masculinity, and you can see them both becoming increasingly manifested in Western society. One is that radical feminism is driving a deeper wedge between the sexes, undermining the family unit, and they're creating a growing subculture of young men who no longer see any benefit to getting married or settling down or having children, and this dramatically affects the birth rate which is seriously affecting the, uh, the future of Western nations. Islamic fundamentalists openly say that they're confident that they can defeat the West simply by outbreeding us. And you can certainly see that happening in Europe. The other consequence is that a generation or two of men are being taught to reject their own toxic masculinity. They're confused about what it means to be a man, how to act like one, what a man's responsibilities are, and how to defend their homes and homeland. And a society that cannot or will not protect or defend itself or its women is one that is ripe for conquest. Um, as an example, witness the embarrassing reaction of European men and authorities to the rape culture, which the European elites have imported along with millions of so-called refugees from the Middle East. Uh, after hundreds of women in various northern European cities were sexually assaulted by Arabic migrants, Last New Year's Eve, the authorities responded by urging women to dress more modestly, move in numbers, um, carry rape whistles, or wear uh, temporary tattoos that say no. 400 men in Amsterdam uh, expressed their solidarity with the victims last year by marching together down the streets in short skirts. That's not exactly going to strike fear into the hearts of the enemy. But that kind of pathetic response is signaling our submission to an Islamic fundamentalist culture that places a very high premium on masculine domination and aggression. And if our men cannot be roused to defend our wives and sisters and daughters, if we can't even be bothered to produce more children, then the West is lost. So that's why the war on masculinity is critical. Uh, that's why we need to be aware of what's happening and why, and to push back against the subversion. Now, obviously, I've just scratched the surface. There's a lot more to be said about this. Uh, but maybe another time, perhaps. Thanks for listening. This has been Mark Tapson for the Glazov Gang. Check out more of my work at marktapson.com. And remember that Jamie Glazov is doing important work and unique work. So please help support his show, The Glazov Gang, by donating at jamieglazov.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Glazov Gang's YouTube channel. Thanks again. Be seeing you.